special thanks to Tokyo Treat and Sakurako for sponsoring today's video. A little while back, we made a video discussing whether or not the end of series Gotei 13 was the weakest iteration to date, looking at the Shinigami that currently make up the ranks of Captain and Vice Captain. It's a contentious question. After all, we've seen a variety of versions of the Gotei 13 come and go throughout history, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. As the organisation most central to the story and world of Bleach, we've spent a lot of time with the Gotei 13 over the years and come to know it very well, seeing it take on many different forms as captains come and go, characters are promoted and some are even killed, and the Gotei 13 itself shifts and adapts to the whims of the current world. Usually headed up by 13 captains and 13 vice captains, there's no denying the Gote 13 is an all powerful military force in the world of Bleach, often only challenged by enemy armies of similar scope. But which version of the Gote 13 is the absolute unquestionable king, the unchallenged master? Which iteration, which combination of captains and vice captains makes for the strongest above all else? Well, it's the original one. As noted by at least a couple of characters in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, the very first version of the Gotei 13, only recently revealed to us in full after years of speculation, is considered to be the strongest of them all. So, for fairness sake, we're not counting those guys. Get them out of here. Instead, we're narrowing in on one particular version of the Gotei 13 for this video the very first one we as readers got to meet, the Gotei 13 of the Soul Society arc itself. So in that previous video, if I contend that the Gotei 13 at the end of Bleach is the quote-unquote weakest of the lot when all the characters are taken into account, where does the Soul Society arc version sit? Could it be the absolute strongest. As our first impression of the Gotei 13's military might, it had to put up an impressive display. But does it do enough to be considered the strongest of the lot? In comparison with the end of series Gotei 13 in particular, though we will be comparing it as well with the Gotei 13 of Turn Back the Pendulum, how does it truly stack up? And where does it fall down? Let's take a look. Before we get started on the video, guys, if you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure to do that now for more Bleach content like this every single week. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well to help support me and the channel. And if you want to take that support for me another step further, I do also have a Patreon as well. And as always, I want to give an enormous shout out and say a huge thank you to everyone supporting me over there on Patreon. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And there will probably be some spoilers for the Thousand Year Blood War arc of Bleach in the video to follow. So then, as we prepare to dive headfirst into the lineup of the Soul Society arcs Gotei 13, we'll be taking a look at the characters as they're presented to us in that part of the story, though with an all-encompassing, omniscient knowledge of everything they can do, everything they should be able to do at that point in the story. So, for example, take Kyoraku Shinsui, although we don't see his Bankai in the Soul Society arc, we know he can do it then, and we know what it consists of. We'll also only be considering the duo of captain and vice captain, as they're considered the overall leaders of the Gotei 13, the officers in the top spot, and those that truly represent it. After a brief overview of the Gotei 13 itself, as it stood at the time, I want to then dive deeper into each individual division before coming to a conclusion at the end. So, without further ado, this is the lineup of the Gotei 13 in the Soul Society arc. Is this the strongest collective of captains and vice-captains that we get to see? In the first division, you have Captain Shigakuni Genryusai Yamamoto and his vice-captain Chojiro Sasakibe. The second division is headed up by Captain Soifon and her vice-captain Marechio Omaida. The third division of the time was run by Captain Gin Ichimaru and his vice-captain Izaru Kira. The fourth division in the Soul Society arc was led by Retsu Unohana and her vice captain Isane Kotetsu. The fifth division's captain was none other than Sosuke Aizen and his vice captain was Hinamori Momo. The sixth division 
is run by Byakia Kuchki and his vice-captain Renji Abarai. The 7th Division's captain is Seijin Komamura and his vice-captain is Tetsuzaimon Iba. The 8th Division is helmed by Kyoraku Shunsui and his vice-captain Nanao Issei. The 9th Division's captain is Kaname Tosun and his vice-captain is Shuhei Hisagi. Over in the 10th Division, the captain is Toshiro Hitsugaya and his vice-captain is Rangiku Matsumoto. The 11th Division is headed by Captain Kenpachi Zaraki, and his vice-captain at the time was Yachiru Kusajishi. Over in the 12th Division, we have Captain Mayori Kurotsuchi, and his vice-captain slash daughter, Nemu Kurotsuchi. And then finally, over in the 13th Division, we only have a Captain Jushiro Ukitake, as this is the sole division to not have a second in command. So, a quick overview then. My first impressions of this particular Gote 13 lineup are extremely positive, for the most part, though it does fall down in a few areas across the board. As our first experience with the Gote 13 as a faction in Bleach, it's clear that many characters involved here are only just starting their respective developmental journeys. While characters like Kenpachi Zaraki and Toshiro Hitsugaya are a far cry away from the powerful behemoths they'd become later on, there's no denying the absolute raw strength of an organisation that can combine Yamamoto, Unohana, Aizen, Kyoraku, Ukitake and Gin and more all active at once. I'd argue some divisions are markedly weaker here than they were both earlier on and how they would become later on too. The second division stands out to me as one, as does the current iteration of the 11th division, while the 13th suffers from not currently having a vice captain at all. But let's take a deeper look. The first division is headed up by Shigakuni Genryusai Yamamoto, while his vice captain is the steadfast Chojiro Sasakibe. This is an ancient division, with all the might and heft behind it that they've carried on their shoulders for over a thousand years now. Sure, Yamamoto has grown complacent since his victory over Yuhabark's Licht Reich Empire, but crucially, the Yamamoto we see in the Soul Society arc hasn't yet been softened by the impact of Ichigo Kurosaki and his friend's rebellious nature. This is a Captain Commander who's still very much an authoritarian, and won't hesitate to put troublemakers in the ground should he see fit, oftentimes without even listening to reason. While Sasakibe is often overlooked, this is still the same man we know from the Thousand Year Blood War arc, Incredible Bankai and all. Together they form an impenetrable duo, and outside of the earliest days of the Gotei itself, although Yamamoto was of course still a part of that, and so was Sasakibe to our knowledge, the First Division is arguably never stronger nor sturdier than it is here. It becomes more progressive, certainly, as new leadership takes hold later on, but in terms of raw, brute strength, I think the Soul Society arc's version takes it. Meanwhile, the Second Division feels undercooked to me here in the Soul Society arc. While Soifon is able to put up a decent fight against her predecessor in the position, Yoruichi, she's quickly outclassed and overwhelmed, which is especially apparent when she thinks she's developed Shunko herself, a technique that's fairly new to her still, only to learn Yoruichi knew it long ago. And when Yoruichi decides to end the fight, she does so on her terms, completely shutting Soifon down. Of course, the Omnitz kiddo is just as lethal a force as ever, but in terms of leadership, Soifon definitely feels young, immature, and hot-headed during this era. And then there's Omaida, who hasn't learned any humility or honour yet whatsoever, nor does he seem to really respect his position in the division. Instead, he's boorish, oafish, lazy and arrogant, and it shows. While we don't know much about Omaida's father, Morena Shin, and the previous vice-captain of the division, we can surmise that together, he and Yoroichi made for a more cohesive and well-adjusted unit over a hundred years ago, as I believe Kubo at least said that Morena Shin was an actual capable soldier 
in complete contrast to his son. Meanwhile, in the future, Soifon will eventually master her Shunko, and her bond with Omaida only tightens over time as he begins to take his job more seriously. The second division still has a lot of growing up to do in this version of the Gote 13, however. The third division is an interesting one. At this point in time, it's headed up by the prodigal Gin Ichimaru, who, while young himself too, is incredibly dangerous. Wicked smart, savvy, and self-aware, Gin is an asset to this era of the Gote 13, and outside of the older captains at the time, is, I would say, probably one of the strongest officers in general, and certainly someone that it stings to lose later on. In fact, it's during this time period that the Gote 13 is privy to not only one, but two prodigies among its captaincy, though Hitsugaya in particular still has a lot of room to grow, in more ways than one. While Gein seems to be about as skilled as he deems necessary, Gein's an intriguing character in that he's laser-focused on a singular goal. He wants something, and he seems to have acquired the power he believes he needs to achieve it, and nothing more. Certainly in comparison to both the division's past and future Captain Rose, Gein seems to be considerably more effective, I'd say, even after Rose has been holofied, and that's coming from a fan of Rose myself. Then there's Izuru Kira, his vice-captain, a somewhat meek Shinigami on the outside, but one who's perfectly capable and who wields an extremely powerful Zan Pakuto. So powerful, in fact, that it made the honourable mention section of my list of the strongest Shikai and Bleach. So what you've got here during the Soul Society arc is a pair of extremely competent Shinigami who seem to be almost both all-rounders. We know that Izuru is proficient in both swordplay with a great Zanpak Toy, but also healing as well, and in the past, Gein has been actively compared to Byakia in terms of his kind of overall skill set and how strong and how adept he actually is. As they don't take part in combat in an official capacity, the fourth division is a hard one to place, and it's one of the divisions that's left mostly unchanged throughout the story. The most important aspect, of course, is the captain, Retsu Unohana, who is perhaps the most proficient healer the Soul Society has ever known, or at least the Gote 13 has ever known, outside of maybe Tenjiro of the Zero Division, but it's impossible to know currently if he was ever even really a member of the Gote 13 at all. An ancient captain, Unohana bears a wealth of experience, but also a dark secret. In truth, she's Yachiru Unohana, the first Kenpachi, and a devilishly powerful fighter in her own right. But crucially, though, I'm not sure she would have ever taken up arms again outside of specifically being ordered to for a special circumstance, which is, of course, what ends up unfolding. But still, within every iteration of the Gote 13, we see in the story her healing prowess is unparalleled, and the Gote 13 is clearly worse off after her death. Losing her in the Thousand Year Blood War arc is a big, big blow to the overall skill and utility of the organisation moving forward. Meanwhile, her vice-captain Isane Kotetsu is obviously a fantastic healer in her own right, but remains to this day, unfortunately, one of the characters we just never get to see that much from, making her very difficult to gauge. And so by the time the end of the series rolls around, we've gone from having a highly respected 4th Division in the Soul Society arc and beyond, to one where we know next to nothing about both of its commanding officers. And then here, of course, we come to a big one. Under Sosuke Aizen, the fifth division of the Soul Society arc is incredibly powerful, and he, much like Gein before him, is an asset that is sorely missed in future versions of the organisation. In fact, I'd argue that Aizen is so powerful that he's one of a few captains capable of completely elevating an entire iteration of the Gote 13, thanks to his mere presence. We see, 
in the fake Karakura Town arc that he's worth multiple captain level opponents just by himself, and that's before the Hogyoku even really gets involved in any kind of capacity. But there's a bit more to say about Aizen when it comes to a different version of the Gotei, one which I think actually has a superior version of the 5th Division overall that of Turn Back the Pendulum, where the 5th Division effectively has two captain-level Shinigami leading it between Shinji and Aizen. Certainly, when it comes to Turn Back the Pendulum, if you look at the 5th Division, it really is, I would say, markedly more powerful than over half the other divisions in that Gotei 13, if not probably more. In the Soul Society arc, however, Aizen's vice captain is Hinamori Momo, who often gets a bad rap due to her character being dominated by questions of her fractured mental state, followed by a diminished presence in general, but she's a skilled fighter, particularly when it comes to using Kido. But as earnestly skillful as both Shinji and Hinamori are, neither of them can really fill the void left by Aizen's departure from the Division. To me, the 6th Division of the Soul Society arc feels like it's close to breaching that upper echelon of Divisions, but doesn't quite manage it. Both Byakia Kuchki and Renji Abarai are clearly very powerful, with Byakia especially being presented as a genuine threat, an all-rounder Shinigami with a devastating Zanpak Toe. And with the two of them acting as narrative roadblocks for Ichigo himself, there's a lot of focus placed on this division from an early point. The sixth division is also a fun one in that it's one of the few divisions in the present day timeline that remains completely unchanged from start to finish, even if that was up in the air for a while there at the start of the Thousand Year Blood War. Both Byakia and Renji, therefore, are true stalwarts of the Gotei 13 and represent the power and consistency of the organisation, though as we see in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, there's room still for them to grow. But any Gotei 13 with them in is a powerful one regardless. And interestingly, the past iteration of the 6th Division is the only different one, and with both Ginrei and Sojin Kuchki leading it, we know next to nothing about its capabilities. However, Sojin was noted as being quite a sickly individual, so it's possible that it was weaker than it was with Byakia and Renji in charge, certainly towards the end of Bleach, but as far as the Soul Society arc versions of those characters go, it is difficult to gauge. Now, before we continue with the latter half of the video, however, first, a word from today's sponsor. All right, well, here we are once again as Tokyo Treat and Sakurako are continuing to support the channel by kindly sponsoring today's video. Jade's back as my co-host. She's back to once again eat treats. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do things ever so slightly differently this time around. But before we get into that, firstly, a quick breakdown on what Tokyo Treat and Sakurako are all about. So the goal behind these monthly Japanese snack boxes is pretty simple. Basically, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako are trying to invite everyone to experience Japan from the comfort of their own homes through these different snack boxes. First up, we have Tokyo Treat, which is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box, and inside it, you'll find up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, kind of limited edition seasonal flavoured Japanese snacks, like, for example, takoyaki flavoured snack mix, okonomiyaki se and chocolate bread bites. Whereas Sakurako is a monthly authentic Japanese snack subscription box. Sakurako supports local Japanese snack makers and in each box you get 20 traditional authentic and artisan Japanese snacks. This month we've got honey apple mochi, mumu kibidango and shine musket jelly. And don't forget you also get a special Japanese tableware item. Okay so rather than us just sit here and eat the snacks in front of the camera we'd actually Make Tom work for it once again. So how's this work? If I well, get a question right, I get to have something. Essentially, if I don't, yeah. You get to have something. And first up for grabs are the snacks from the Tokyo Treat Box, which this month has a theme called Osaka Snackation. First question: During the anime, who is the first captain you ever see? Byakuya is the only one who's currently a captain at the time. Also, Ukitake appears in a small Rukia flashback thing. Oh, Neither Ishin nor Urahara are technically captains, so I'm going to say Byakuya. Mm -mm. Oh, see that? What, yes! What is it then? It's getting off to a good start, guys. It was Ukitake. Oh, see, based on the flashback. Pick my treat. What am I having? Chocolate orange Kit Kats. They have, yes. they have uh, interesting Kit Kat flavours kind of every month. Is it comparable to like oh Terry's gosh. here in the UK? <laughs> I'm not sharing these. <laughs> Great. 
I don't know why we don't get flavours like this here in the UK. Because we're boring. I'm a vice captain in the Gote 13. I love fried rice crackers. I also have the longest name out of the whole series. Who am I? Amida? Yes. It was fate. It opened on the page for the melon panda cookie. He so looks like Spinder from Pokemon. <laughs> Look, he's, oh, he's crying. Oh, that's really upsetting. Why is he crying? Look, he knows his fate. Look at one, one sad, tasty panda. Yeah. It's quite like tropical. Mm hmm. Stuff on a beach. It is, yeah. One so, for two so far. Not great. So, next up, guys, we're going to move on to the Sakurako box as our prize. Mm. So this month's theme for Sakurako is mochi and fruit marvels. In episode seven, oh, so I'm presuming on. this is anime again, sorry. <laughs> While Inoue and Tatsuki show off their art projects, you can see Ishida before his part in episode 11. What is he doing? I've got no idea. Probably sewing. Yeah, isn't he stitching stitching one of the girls' dolls? He's going to have to say, eh, eh. oh, come on. That is it, though, isn't it? It's crocheting. Okay, well, from Sakurako's box, we have what looks like a big bag of peach mochi. Oh, you're just helping yourself, are you? Yeah. I thought this was meant to be mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mochi is so cool. It's like so uniquely Japanese, I feel. I love it. That's way too easy. Even I knew that. This is rigged. Which of these four has a ring attached to their Zanpokuto's suba? I think we know this. You're just not going to give me the multiple choice. Oh, there choice. are options. No, I don't think you, you said should... which of the four, and then you didn't say anything. Well, I think it's Kaname Tosin. You are correct. Yes. You didn't need the four, see? Wait, aren't I meant to pick for you? I've honestly lost track of oh, this yeah, point. I don't have a clue let's what's going on. <laughs> let, we, we both, let's be honest, we both really just want to eat this uh, strawberry manju. Oh, the presentation is immaculate. That is good presentation. It is. Look how cute that is. Yeah, get, the, get the satisfactory split. Fruity mm. and delicious. This would be so cute on like a picnic. I think we have room for a bonus question. Okay. Which Zanpakuto's initial release is activated by the command word growl? Heineko. Well, he answered that immediately. <laughs> the booklet has revealed to us that this last one we're going to try is handily called lemon pie. Those uh, layers are very, um, very appealing, very satisfying to this look at. This is very afternoon tea, actually. Yeah. Okay, and so it's that time once again where we say thank you very much to Tokyo Treat and Sakurako for sponsoring today's video and for continuing to support the channel. And they've given me a code which you can find in the description box and the pinned comment down below so I can pass some savings on to you guys if you wanted to pick up some snack boxes for yourselves. Guys, if you decide to get some boxes, I really, really hope you enjoy them. And of course, thanks once again to Tokyo Treat and Sakurako for sponsoring today's video. And before we go, Jade, I want to leave you with this adage given to me on this little melon gal fret. When our hearts are fully satisfied, our taste buds are fully satisfied. <laughs> and so moving on up next, then there's the seventh division, which is certainly one of the most underutilized divisions among the Gote 13. The captain, Seijin Komamura, is arguably one of the most physically powerful Shinigami in the Gote at the time, but they don't have a lot else going for them other than that. Iba, being a completely unknown quantity, doesn't help at all, and we go through the entire series, including him becoming a captain at the end, without learning a thing about him or his combat skills, outside of assumptions that we can probably rightly make, but that's not a particularly sturdy basis. Gauging this version of the 7th Division against what comes both before and after, and it's again a difficult task. Much like Rose before him, Love is another captain turned Visard who simply isn't that impressive, at least not to me anyway, and nothing is known about his vice captain at the time, Jinemon Kotsubaki. Then, with Iba at the helm in the future, I have a hard time imagining that the 7th Division is as strong as it once was, but I'm willing to be proven wrong. Kyoraku Shunsui is one of the oldest captains of the Gote 13, and as such is carrying incredible power and knowledge with him as leader of the 8th Division. Though we wouldn't get to see too much from him in the Soul Society arc itself, we know what he's capable of. Whether this is counted as a downside or not, the fact that he's as old and as experienced as he is means his overall strength doesn't fluctuate much throughout the series. It remains a constant, and he's considered one of the Gote 13's most capable combatants with piercing perception and an incredible mind, as well as a basically broken Zanpak toe to boot. Yamamoto himself marvels in awe at the mere sight of Kyoraku and Ukitake fighting side by side with their Shikai unleashed, and having the trio 
of master and his students active in the role of captain at the same time makes for a devastatingly powerful trifecta, and that's without even considering other immensely strong Shinigami who were around at the same time during the Soul Society arc. Unfortunately for the 8th Division, Nanao is a bit more of an unknown, especially in comparison to her predecessor, Lisa Yadamaru, who, while again, not getting a lot of time to showcase what she can do, she does actually fight at least a bit, whereas Nanao prefers administrative work to active field work. That being said, she is a bona fide Kido expert, though her true capabilities wouldn't be available to her for some time yet. In my video ranking the captains of the Soul Society arc in terms of their overall strength and combat effectiveness, I placed the 9th Division's Kaname Tosen dead last. And while I stand by that verdict, that doesn't mean he's weak. It's a testament, in fact, I would say, to the calibre of captains in the Soul Society arc that someone who can rob an enemy of almost all of their senses still somehow doesn't quite match up to the overwhelming power and versatility on display here. In fact, I attributed his last place showing more to his mentality and attitude than anything else. Tosin's relative lower ranking, however, is somewhat offset by his vice-captain Shuhei Hisagi, who is a genuine all-rounder in terms of ability with a vicious Shikai on top, and he's easily one of the most capable of vice-captains probably even back in the Soul Society arc since we know what he can do, even if he doesn't get a chance to really show it. Under Tosin, the 9th Division cultivates very hard-working, diligent, and powerful soldiers. And yet, like the 7th Division, it's underutilised on the whole, though perhaps here in a slightly different way. Its past and future iterations both have Kensei Mugaruma at the helm, who much like his other Vizard contemporaries often fails to impress, I'd argue even more so than Tosin. The 10th Division is an interesting one as well. While its vice-captain Rangiku Matsumoto has remained mostly stagnant for many years, she's an adept and skilled fighter all the same that shouldn't be underestimated. But it's with the division's prodigal captain that most of the potential lies. By the series end, the 10th division has possibly become one of the strongest of the lot. The captain, Toshiro Hitsugaya, has completed his Bankai and much of his developmental arc, becoming something of an icy reflection of Yamamoto himself in the process, though still with room to grow. But like many others, Toshiro's journey is a lengthy and difficult one, and while he's powerful in the Soul Society arc, he's really only just getting started. But the 10th Division is interesting for another reason. It possibly holds the key to what could be the true strongest version of the Gote 13, but we'll get into that in a bit. Speaking of journeys, our initial introduction to the fight-loving 11th Division paints an almost completely different picture to that which we'd get by the end of the series. Captain Kenpachi Zaraki, much like Hitsugaya in the Division prior, has a long way to go before he unlocks and attains his true latent strength. Don't take that to mean he's weak, however. He still manhandles both Tosin and Komamura at the same time before soundly defeating the former in a battle, and Zaraki only grows more and more powerful as the fights drag on by, with his duel with Ichigo granting him another boost. What I'm getting at is that even at this early stage, Zaraki remains an absolute asset to this version of the Gote 13, even if not quite on the level of where he is in the second invasion of the Thousand Year Blood War arc. He's tough, bloodthirsty, and almost impossible to bring down. Sure, he's only going to get stronger, but here in this Gote, when he's surrounded on all sides by titans of power, it's impressive to me that he continues to stand out nonetheless. What's more difficult is gauging his vice-captain at the time, Yachiru, as she's not even really a Shinigami. There's no question about it, the 11th Division will see better days and only continue to improve, and as far as I'm concerned, much like the 6th Division, they're a rare squad that's actually at their apex by the end of Bleach. The 12th Division is another tough one to figure out, though Soul Society is certainly no lesser for having them around, even if their morals are dubious. 
Yes, Mayuri Kurotsuchi is caught off guard by Uryu and defeated, but I think a number of captains would have been as well. Mayuri might cycle through outfits and looks like there's no tomorrow, but what's never changed about him is his incredible intelligence. And with both Aizen and Mayuri occupying leadership positions in this Gote 13, you're looking at two of the three smartest individuals in the Bleach universe gathered in one place. Of course, we are missing Kisuke Urahara, who is an immeasurable asset to the Gote 13 of 100 years ago. But you know, for the most part, Mayuri makes for a decent, if unhinged, replacement for his former superior. Mayuri is a weird character in that he doesn't play by the rules, as we all know. In terms of his combat effectiveness, the Mayuri we see here in the Soul Society arc is essentially the same as he appears by the series end, minus a new Bankai, which admittedly is a nice upgrade, but what I'm getting at is Mayuri's true danger comes from his intellect and his ability to prepare for any situation. And then there's Nemu, who again, we don't know too much about, but don't have much reason to suspect she's any different here in terms of capability than she is later on. And while I'm a big fan of Akon, who later becomes the 12th Division's vice captain, he really hasn't shown much of what he can do, even in comparison to Nemu. And finally, that brings us to the 13th Division, which, like I said, doesn't have a vice captain in the Soul Society arc. That's an immediate blow to their effectiveness, especially when you look to both the past, where that spot was represented by another prodigy, Kaien Shiba, and the future, where Rukia Kuchki steps up to take over and only proceeds to get more powerful. At the same time, Captain Jushiro Ukitake is a similar figure to Kyoraku before him. Experienced, wise, powerful, and wielding an incredible amount of Ryoku to sustain his sick and frail body. While the extent of Ukitake's capabilities is never really explored in the same way as Kyoraku's, Ukitake is another character whose reputation precedes him. As one of the elder captains, he's extremely strong, intelligent, and world-weary. By the time the story ends, the Division is certainly worse off without him around. So, after that deep dive into the individual lineup of the Soul Society arc's Gote 13, is it the strongest we've ever seen, barring, of course, that original version? I'm inclined to say yes, with one potential caveat, which we'll get into in a second. While the end of series Gote 13 reaches some incredible highs with newfound power-ups for characters like Zaraki, Byakia, Toshiro, Rukia, and Renji, all of whom occupy slots in the current leadership alongside historical stalwarts like Kyoraku, it's balanced out unfavorably by a string of both relative unknowns and seemingly totally inexperienced captains, as explained in my previous video on the subject. Meanwhile, the Gote 13 of the Soul Society arc feels like it strikes a perfect balance, and there is less disparity between the strongest captain and the weakest, even with the strongest being incredibly powerful here. The leadership in general is crammed full of extraordinarily capable soldiers, from that trifecta of Yamamoto, Kyoraku, and Ukitake, to more secretive monsters like Aizen, Gin, and Unahana. In my opinion, having all of these powerhouses operating at once is absolutely insane, and that's without even considering characters like Byakia and Zoraki, who are absolutely not weak. But even when they are being dwarfed by the likes of the aforementioned characters, you know you've got something special. And crucially, I think that perfect balance struck by the Soul Society arc's Gote 13 means it is able to cover all bases effectively. Even the vice captains here are a powerful bag too, with Sasakibe leading a charge that includes Renji, Hisagi, Izuru, and more. The Gote 13 of the Soul Society arc compares well, in my opinion, to every other iteration with an incredible mix of characters. Where the end of series Gote feels very extreme in its highs and lows, here, even the so-called weakest captains Tosen, Hitsugaya, Komamura, 
are fully capable of pulling their weight, taking us back to this idea of balance, which I think is crucial. It also compares favourably to the Gote from Turn Back the Pendulum 2. Again, that lineup is littered with unknown quantities, but I also find it hard to believe anyone would rightfully take Shinji, Rose and Kensei over Aizen, Gein and Tosin, which is essentially what also happens in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, especially before Holofication, but truthfully, even after it too. Turn Back the Pendulum is interesting in that it has a lot of the same heft that the Soul Society Art Gote does in that quartet of older captains, but it's totally missing, in my opinion, that mid-range bulk that really helps to even things out. Plus, it's clear that as far as Kenpachi go, Kiganjo is a bit of a laughing stock in comparison to even a Soul Society Arc Zaraki, and the position of Kenpachi is where a lot of your Gote 13's physical might is supposed to originate from. There's only one more consideration to bring up. Earlier when discussing the 10th Division, I mentioned they might hold the key to what is the true strongest version of the Gote 13, and I also mentioned that there is a caveat to me thinking the Soul Society arc version is the best, and that caveat, that key, is this. It can be found 20 years into the past, before the main storyline. The Everything But The Rain version of the Gote 13 is one that we barely see at all, and, crucially, is almost totally identical to the Gote 13 of the Soul Society arc, as they exist in such close proximity to one another in the timeline. Again, you've got that legendary quartet of older captains, plus the trio of Aizen, Gein, and Tosin. While initially in the source material we weren't 100% sure on the full lineup, the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime at least showcased a Gote 13 that's exactly the same, essentially, featuring Zaraki, featuring Komamura, featuring Soifon, with one key difference. Toshiro Hitsugaya as captain of the 10th Division is replaced by Ishin Shiba, who by all counts is much more powerful. Ishin is shown to be extremely strong and is a member of one of the five major noble houses of the Soul Society as well. So, if it counts, my answer at the end of the video is that no, the Soul Society Art Gote 13 isn't the strongest of the bunch, it's actually the Gote 13 of everything but the rain. But I can understand why that might not count, as we don't necessarily know the complete workings of that Gote 13. While we can pretty easily and safely assume that the Vice Captain lineup is exactly the same again as that of the Soul Society arc, I don't think we know for sure. So really that one's up to you, but as far as I'm concerned, yes, this version of the Gote 13 around the Soul Society arc is the most powerful of the bunch, apart from, of course, that original set. That's it for the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below which version of the Gote 13 do you think is the absolute strongest? Am I right with saying it's the Soul Society arc version of the Gote 13? Or, if you'll allow it, even more so the everything but the rain version of the Gote 13, which I think is exactly the same, except it changes out one crucial character. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Which version do you think is the best, and which one do you think is the weakest? Please do let me know. Of course, make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't done already. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and until next time, I'll catch you later, and I'll see you then.